Hey guys. If you're not sure how to efficiently use events in your games, then stay tuned to learn everything you need to know to become a great developer. In this video, I'll be talking about events and functions, their usages, comparison of those usages, creating a network module, and then an implementation of that network module. Before we get started though, I just want to mention that the channel is about to reach 5,000 subscribers and the community is getting close to having 1,000 members. So when we hit those milestones, I'll be doing a $50 giveaway, so make sure to subscribe, recommend the channel to your friends, and join up in the community server. Okay, so when we're making our game, there are two different kinds of communication and there's two different forms of communication. The first kind of communication are events, and it takes the form of remote events and bindable events, as well as there are remote functions and bindable functions. And first I'll start by talking about events. So uh, remote events allow you to send messages between the server and the client. Bindable events allow you to send messages across the same uh, domain per se, so server to server or client to client. And that is, when I say client to client, I mean your own client. I don't mean from one client to another. And so here in this example, you can see that I've written that when a player joins, it's gonna fire the client with this join event. And on the server, we're gonna fire um, this server event. And on the client, we do something similar where there's a, a client event, which just prints a message. And when we receive the server message, it's gonna say uh, whatever the server said. But something I want to show is that the same event, the same bindable event, can be used for communication, but it's kept to the side that the event is called on. So in this case on the client, and in this case on the server. So when I play, we see in the output that there was the server event on the server, there was a join event on the client here, which is the message that was sent from the server. The server and client both print event from the same bindable event. Remote functions follow more of a question-answer kind of protocol. So the client will invoke a remote function uh, asking some sort of question, whether that's asking for some data or something like that. In our case, we pass this string to present the idea of the conversation, but then it returns some sort of answer. So on the server, we're going to print what the client's asking and the server will return yes. So then the client will get this yes answer and so it should say, uh, client asking, can I say hi? And then it should say server said yes, if we run it. And there we go. Client asking, can I say hi? And the server said yes. Bindable functions work in the same way as remote functions, just across the same uh, run context that like the bindable events. So server to itself or a client to itself. Something that's very important about remote functions is that they yield when they're called. So when the client calls, can I say hi, this script doesn't execute this next line until we get that answer back, whatever that answer is. So it's really important when you're using remote functions that you never ask something from a client on the server, you should use events for that. But the server usually has some sort of authority over whatever's going on in the client, so there aren't many cases where you need to ask the client specifically for some information. So there's generally two ways that people set up their games, and that's using instances in replicated storage in the tree. And in this case, you can see we I have all of my events sorted out here in this game I was working on. There's all these bindable events for the client. Uh, there's a bunch of bindable functions and bindable events for the server, and this is for communication between different modules in my game. So um, the game controller will send to the tycoon, like the game's code will send to the tycoon code uh, saying that the round has started, so we need to generate, um, we need to reset and regenerate the prefabs for the tycoon. As well as the remote um, folder here, as well as the remote folder here, which allows us to communicate from the client to the server or vice versa. So in this case, um, there's a query here where the player will ask of the server if it owns an item. Or there's another query here where the player will attempt to purchase an item and then we will uh, perform a rollback based off whether or not the item was actually purchased. The other style for networking involves not using instances in the tree, but actually using a network module. And so this module exposes a bunch of events, or a bunch of methods, sorry, that allow us to interact on the server and on the client. 
And it looks something like this, at least in my implementation in code, where uh, you get events and you connect how you would and you provide a name for the event. My networking module is all of 150 lines and really all it does is wrap the remote events, remote functions, bindable events, and bindable functions into one module that lets you implement all of them in code instead of creating and referencing instances in the tree. And I used to be a big fan of having a bunch of instances in the tree, but I decided to use a module one day and I just thought it worked better for me. And I really want to emphasize that when you're watching this and you're following along that you should do whatever you think is better for your project or whatever you think works best for your workflow. There's no reason to download some sort of crazy module that, you know, implements, you know, compression and all this stuff when you're making a, a clicker game like you don't need that you just need whatever whatever lets you make your game faster and whatever helps you to understand what you're creating okay so there's some pros and cons with each um as far as the pros uh, when you're working with instances it's much easy to visualize and remember what events you have to work with and you get a uh, better auto completion you get the auto completion that roblox comes with but when you're using a network module, some of the pros are you get rapid development for prototyping. You get one reference in code for many events, so you only have to get the network module once. That's one line, and then every other event is just one line for each event. And you can easily extend the functionality of remote events and remote functions, such as functions like fire all accept or firing for a specific group of players. Some of the cons for using these styles is that uh, instance for instances, uh, there's a lot of reference and especially if you have a lot of events in your game There's a lot more instances in your tree and that can make it harder to work through um, And I think it's open to view for exploiters though. I'm not totally sure. I'm not really big on the uh, Exploiting scene the cons for the network module are that I often forget or misspell names and there's no auto completion And there's no way to remember as well as there's often race conditions So you need to use the module in a specific way and just the amount of time taken to create the module and, you know, the way that the module is created, if you don't use your own, then you're going to have to uh, spend time learning how to use the module. To create our module, we're going to want to handle three things. Well, four things, I guess. So we're going to want to handle remote events, remote functions, bindable events, bindable functions. And so when we create our network module, uh, we're just going to want to outline the general functions that we're going to want to use and just kind of start to... Uh, create an idea of what we're making and I like to do this when I'm doing anything I just like to outline all the functions I think I might need and then just kind of start filling in the pieces especially with the module We want to define an interface that we're comfortable with as well So the first thing we're going to need is some sort of function that gets the uh, remote event bindable event bindable function, etc and in this case I am not actually going to write out the whole module. I'm just going to write the implementation for remote events. It's up to you guys to figure out how you want your module done. Uh, I'm just going to give you the first few steps here. So we're going to want some sort of function that gets the remote event. Um, we're going to want to expose a method to uh, create remote events. So when we're writing our code and we want to define a remote event, uh, that's what we're going to want to do. We're going to want something that can fire to the server, some way to fire our client. Uh, we're also going to want ways that we can connect to those events when those things happen. So I will write out the content of these functions and then I'll uh, write a little implementation. So I wrote out the implementation for getting a remote event and essentially what it does is it will see if there's an existing event and it'll just kick that back out. If we're on the client, we're going to wait for that event to be created. And if we're on the uh, server, we're just going to create that event and then return it. And so create remote is just going to be as simple as uh, getting the remote event. And so if we're on the client, it'll wait for it. Uh, if we're on the server, it'll do the creation. Uh, and essentially what's nice is even if we use the uh, fire server method and we don't even create a remote event, um, by using this get function, it'll create an event for us if it hasn't been created and then it'll fire it right after. So I'll write out the implementation so you guys can see. So I wrote out the implementation there for fire server and fire client. And so essentially what I use here is I use these ellipses, which just means any number of arguments uh, after this argument, and it just treats it as like a tuple. So what we do is we get the remote event that we want to use, 
and we call the fire server action on that remote event and we just pass in all these other arguments. Fire client is the exact same. We get the event and the we pass in the client through code and then we pass in the extra arguments as well. And adding those two other functions are as simple as just returning the client and server event properties from the remote event. And I like to do it this way instead of having a connect function because then you can handle the connection for that event in another script. And I don't really want to have to handle connections in this module as well as like write some sort of connection handling system. And that really gets beyond the scope of what I think the module needs to do. Like the module's goal is to implement all of the networking communication features of the bindable and remote events and functions, but just in one in one module. And so just like that, with a few lines of code, we implemented a remote event here without creating any instances or anything. With one line, we're able to create the remote event and fire it to this player when they join the game. And then on the local script, we just simply get the client event for message and we print the message out. And this really helps because I don't have to add in extra references to wherever the remote event is. I don't have to add in references for the remote events themselves. And especially once more events uh, start getting added to my game, it becomes more complex to try and rename them and, and move them around. And especially if you're sorting them and all that stuff, it just makes it so much easier to just type in the name of it and then pass in all the arguments that are required. And if we run here, we can see that the welcome message was successfully sent to the client. And you'll see at runtime, the way I've set it up is just like I explained earlier, where the remote events will get created under the network module. And so creating the rest of your module is that simple. You just have to extend it to the features that you want and the networking implementations that you want. Uh, but that's not up to me, that's up to you. You have to go out and you have to figure out what interface you want on your module to so thank you guys for watching this video. Um, I'm again trying to get back on the weekly upload schedule. If you're interested in supporting me and supporting me creating content, consider becoming a channel member. I'll be putting out a full game tutorial series out for members uh, before the end of the year. So that's before the end of 2025. Full series for channel members on a game, on how to create a game. And I want to give a shout out to Landon, Freaks, and Dory, the three channel members right now. Um, you guys are awesome. You guys motivate me to continue making videos and thank you for your support. Everybody have a great day.